So, what's up everybody? Today we're working on my buddy Joe from, uh, I, used to, I used to tattoo out of his house in his kitchen several years ago. So we've got some history. And I get to see him once every couple months now. Been working on this sleeve of his. He's the guy that has uh, my picture, my portrait on his arm. Which is crazy. But uh, he's got Bam Margera on there, Vanilla Ice. Um, who else does he have on there? Fred Durst, that's right, Fred Durst. So we're doing Gwen Stefani today, one of my first crushes. And uh, yeah, so I'm pretty stoked about this one. I love like 90s pop culture tattoos. So join me on this journey today as we work through this tattoo and I kind of give you some tips, hints, and just let you in on my process on how I work these micro portraits. I like to implement a vegan process through my tattooing, so I use um, all vegan products as I can. That includes ink to the cream, uh, everything involved, down to the razors. Uh, believe it or not, there's actually animal parts in these razors. Uh, the tiny little strip at the top of it is generally made with animal parts, kind of crazy. Uh, I use Second Skin. It's an all vegan company ran by my buddy Eric. It's a very basic uh, lubrication. It's just uh, shea butter, cocoa butter, and a few oils. Uh, it's no different than anything you'd use. Normally, it's just minus animal parts and animal testing. Nobody likes to test on animals. Learn what you're putting into your tattoos. I like to use hive cups. Uh, they've got a nice stable bottom to them so they don't ever tip over. You've got plenty of room to kind of wash out your needle. And the caps themselves are just really freaking cool. And they come in a bunch of different colors. So, I mean, depending on the tattoo, today we're working on a 90s tattoo. I figured I'd kind of 90s it up a bit, right? I like to use Bishop cartridges. Uh, I think they're one of the more well-made cartridges on the market and I, they stand by their company. Um, any, any issues I've ever had with them, whether it be with their machines or cartridges, they always stand by their product. And, uh, you know, they're very responsive. So I love them for that. Not, a, not only is it a great product, but it's great customer service, which is very hard to find in this realm. Typically, I'll leave my cartridges on the side of my setup in case I don't use a needle, it doesn't go to waste. So I'll just try to keep them all in here in order from smallest to largest, uh, you know, liners to mags. And then that way I just kind of pick them up as I go. I kind of just pick them up from here. There's no cross contamination. And uh, yeah, and like I said, that way you're not wasting a needle if you don't end up using one or two. So, I'm uh, going to Google currently to pull up an image of 90s Gwen Stefani. Sometimes I'll use, uh, you know, Google, sometimes I'll use DeviantArt or other things to kind of just, depending on what I'm looking for, I'll use a few different um, websites, uh, kind of go down a little bit of a rabbit hole trying to find, like if it's for movies or TV shows and things like that, there are websites that screen grab the entire series or entire episode or movie. So you can break down frame by frame. You don't even have to run the movie yourself. There are websites that do that for you. But since we're looking for 90s Gwen Stefani, uh, we're gonna use Google Images. I think I wanna look for something that's got some cool hair to her or something like that. We're not doing a full body today. We're just doing a head, so I gotta keep that in mind. Uh, although as cool as that looks, we're not gonna get that far. And just that by itself, I don't think would look good. So we're probably gonna be looking for something more along these lines. And she was so spicy. Whew. Sometimes when my photos aren't that great, we run it through this app called Ramini. It allows us to uh, clean things up a bit. It uses um, ad advanced technology or artificial intelligence to kind of uh, go through millions of photos and come up with something that would look very similar. So we start off with this low res image of Gwen Stefani. It just takes a few seconds. You can pay, like I think it's $5 for a monthly subscription or you get it for free if you don't mind the ads. I pay five bucks because I do so many portraits and it's just worth it to not have to sit here and uh, wait to the ads because you still have to wait for the AI to work. It doesn't take too long. And then we get this cleaned up version. And a lot of times it works really well. So we just gotta kinda go through and see what it picked up. It didn't quite necessarily uh, pick out exactly what was on her forehead, but for the most part, I feel like we have a fairly solid representation of Gwen Stefani there. It doesn't look like, a... dude, let's see which one's better. I can't tell if that one's, if this is a better image or if the other one's a better image. I just don't, not a huge fan of all those necklaces on her. So my client sent me this picture at first and we're just coming, coming up with a couple different options in case this doesn't work as well as we thought. So we pulled up um, an older photo of Gwen on the side. We kind of ran it through the remaining you have to clean it up. So I'm gonna put them both in black and white and just see what the features look like when we put them both in black and white. Bring the saturation all the way down. Bounce over to that one. Bring that saturation all the way down. Hmm. So I'm just not completely sold on 
these two yet. There's a lot of black going on to help uh, help the whites and things like that pop out. So I know going into this one, we'd have to put a lot of black in the background. Which I'm not super sold on yet. It just depends on how it fits on the arm. And with this one, I'm not completely sold on how her head is cocked and there's not a lot of uh, too much contrast going on. So we can edit that in a bit if we decide to go with that one, pull some um, more shadows out and add some more highlights into it. But uh, I'm just gonna look at a few more references real quick and just see what else we can come up with. Ooh, Tumblr. Tumblr might give us some good shit. I forget about Tumblr sometimes. They've got gold, man. Like all the shit I've never even seen on Google yet, you know. Visa and Visa. So sometimes if you're still not quite satisfied with the face, you can always bring that into Procreate and uh, overlay some layers and kind of just blend the new photo on top of the old one. So you're still using the same basic structure, just kind of cleaning up some features. So I kind of just brought in this other image of the hair since the, uh, the image we want to use doesn't have the complete hair on top. So we brought in some other image that was very close and I think we're going to be able to get away with that. So I brought it on um, and I kind of just brought the opacity down of the one that was sitting on top so I could see what was going on the bottom. Uh, and then we're going to merge these down real quick so it turns into one image. First I'm going to take this image, this combined image, over to Ramini and kind of just clean it up a little bit more before we turn it into black and white. And kind of crop it a little bit so it works a little bit nicer. That's how these apps work. Just give it two seconds. And now we have a nice cleaned up picture of Gwen Stefani. Crazy, right? So now we bring this back into Procreate. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this into black and white real quick. Take the saturation out of it. Pull the saturation all the way down. So we're just gonna kind of get rid of this background a little bit. I don't want all that in the, in the tattoo stencil. So we're gonna kind of just make it roughly what the tattoo is going to look like. And ta -da, something, something along those lines. So then we'll share this. We're going to save it again. Save image. And then this one, we're going to open up the tattoo stencil app. Now here is where you can get a couple different stencils out of this app. The first way by making this a very big image. And then this is going to show us a lot of smaller fine details. So this is almost what I like to use, right? So. Um, there's not a whole lot of noise or anything like that. But now, if we were to keep it the same size without cropping it and keeping it as very small, then you notice we get a little bit thicker lines and things like that. Um, so you kind of just, you find your own happy medium with what you like. So now we take these stencils back to uh, Procreate. Let's lay this on top of her real quick. So we're just gonna match up her ear, her left ear, and then match up her eyes real quick. And I said I kind of just use little landmark points to line everything up. And I'm kind of seeing over here it needs to go to the right a bit more, so I bring that right, but when I do that, the ear comes off, so you kind of just bounce back and forth until you find that it's just about on top of each other, until everything looks happy, roughly around there. So now what I'll do when I have my stencil on top of my reference image is I need to combine those down, not merge, but combine them down to where they stay in a group then I can freely move them together with them staying the same size. This is a piece of paper, a size of a piece of paper, so I know I generally want the tattoo to be around there, somewhere about there. I'm gonna pull the reference to the side of that, and then what I'll do is I need to flip uh, my stencil, because when I run it through the printer, it's going to print it uh, mirrored. So I'm just gonna flip that just like that. One other small thing I do to help my stencils out is I take my reference and I just sharpen it a bit after I shrink it because, you know, you, you see the details kind of getting a little bit blurry. So if we just move the sharpness up a bit, it kind of just refines everything just a hair, allowing for the stencil to come out just a bit cleaner. Sometimes it can help to do it to the reference as well, although she looks pretty clean. So I'm just going to see what it looks like, but we probably won't sharpen it too much. Yeah, she looks pretty clean already. What's up, buddy? What's, What's up, man? How you doing? Good. How have you been? Good. Nice to see you. Come on over. Come on over. So, uh, I, I pulled up the photo you sent me, and also... I mean, let's just can find a new one, a good one. Well, yeah, I found a decent one. I ran it through this app to kind of clean it up a bit. And I don't know how I feel about that one, but I feel like that kind of gives off that 90s Gwen as well. You know, I mean, with the hair. Not the hair is kind of iconic, but you tell me. Yeah, that one's not bad. The other one is just a, oops, not bad. I just, I don't, I don't know how well that's gonna work as a tiny one. Um, 
yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't have the background on this. Maybe a little bit of top or something like that. But I, you know, I feel like there's just something about her her hair on that one that's like that one's to me that one's instantly more recognizable than that one. Okay. Obviously that's Gwen, but I feel like when you see that one from across the street, you're gonna be like, oh, that's Gwen Stefani. Well, let's uh, do that one. But again, that's it's your own. You're the artist, I man. Say. I like it. Yeah, good shit. I do too. Gang, gang. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! All right, let me print that out real quick and see what how big that that is. Okay. So I basically print everything off on matte photo paper instead of uh, glossy photo paper or regular printer paper because I feel like this kind of just dumbs down the details enough to where glossy photo paper almost shows you too much detail. It keeps in too much information and I think it's easier to read um, when you don't have all that information kind of coming at you at once. So it, it just simplifies all the shapes. If you were to like look at the, the right side of her nose here, I feel like this little shape of shadow and shading is a lot easier to read than this one. Maybe to not everybody, but to me I feel like my eye breaks this one apart a little bit easier than this one. Uh, and also when you're tattooing, you know, maybe the, the paper might catch the light, it might make it just harder on yourself. So uh, like I said, it kind of just simplifies all the shades and things like that to where it's eliminating those tiny, tiny little details that probably aren't gonna stay in there for the life of the tattoo anyway. And I use the Epson EcoTank printer that you fill with the solution instead of the old fashioned stencil paper. This I feel like washes away a bit too easy. Uh, and this is a little bit easier to remake stencils over and over again. If I wanted to make 10 stencils of this, I can with a press of a button instead of having to make 10 sheets of this over and over and over again. Uh, and as you know, I think 50 sheets of this cost probably like 50 bucks or something like that nowadays. So it can get rather expensive. Uh, I know everyone at our shop would use about a box of thermal paper uh, a month. And with this, we go through about a bottle a year. So instead of $50 a month, we're going through about $150 for a whole year. The setup can be a little bit more expensive. You know, the printer is probably like two or 300 bucks and this is 150. But once you get going, uh, this just makes things so much easier. The stencils come out a whole lot cleaner. It runs just like any normal printer. Easy peasy. Nice. Now we gotta figure out where we want her, whether it's back. Would you run her more in the front or more in the back? I'd say either one's probably fine. I think either one. Good. That might actually fit really well. It looks really good right there, honestly. Yeah, I think so too. Even if we have to trim that shoulder up here, I think we're good. I think that sits nice. Do it right there then. Yeah, do that. <laughs> so just using some green soap now, just to give him a little shave. Luckily, he's not that hairy. You take off your shirt and you're like, look at this bush hog. <laughs> I have chiseled <laughs> abs underneath my shirt. Absolutely fucking ripped. <laughs> So we use a little bit of this um, spray stuff. It's just a germicide, helps kind of kill some shit. And also it's got a little bit of alcohol in there. So it kind of uh, dries up any soap that may have been left over. And then... Everybody's cleaning and washing. Then we use good old fashioned stencil stuff. So I kind of let it rub on the skin, or I rub it on the skin and then I let it sit just for a second. Uh, to kind of get a bit tacky, and then I put in another small layer. You know, sometimes I'll kind of give it a hand wave, and then I'll apply just a little bit more just to kind of make sure that uh, there's plenty on there. I don't do it overly wet, but I want to make sure that it doesn't feel dry, so I usually oversaturate the area with stencil stuff, just to make sure we got it all. Just kind of let it dry a, a hair again. for the stencil pool. Mm. 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 Nah. I'm just kidding, baby. <laughs> bam then or bam now? <laughs> 
Because maybe and then no. Yeah, maybe and then no. <laughs> Looks good. So do you. Looks good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works. All right, let's see, I gotta, mm. I gotta think how I want you. I know how you want me. Oh, you know, naked, fried, even tofu. Mm. Let's see what that gets us. Is that, is that comfortable? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it feels like good. I'm at the dentist. <laughs> that big ass leg. Okay, this is where we get weird. Let's get weird. If, uh, typically we start from the bottom just to preserve the stencil. Uh, if we started anywhere else, we'd have a chance of wiping the stencil away. So my general rule of thumb is to work uh, dark to light, bottom to top. So we kind of work all the dark areas in, kind of blocking off different shapes, you know, um, working the darker areas in. And then uh, we kind of move our way up. And then as we get up uh, high enough to where we don't have to worry about losing a stencil, we kind of come back down and finish some things that we started. So it's kind of an up, down, up, down, up, down kind of process. Right now, just kind of using a nine round liner bug pen, slightly like layering uh, different different tones of black and we're working with the second to lightest tone right now, kind of blocking in this triangle here. And we're gonna kind of give these shoulders some shape. Uh, I'm using the nine because I feel like if I were using the three right now, it'd be a little more sharp and uh, you'd see a little bit more dots. The nine kind of acts as a shader almost and allows us to get some uh, really soft shades out of it. And as you see in the reference, we have like a ultimate white or like this would be the skin tone white. So I'm not gonna leave this part skin tone because you can tell this is whiter, this is whiter. We want those to stand off. So all that's gonna essentially be shaded. Now we do wanna kind of end at some point. So we'll probably leave a little bit of skin tone coming through the arm. But for the most part, this is gonna be all uh, some sort of shade throughout there. It's gonna be very light, but it will be there. That way this stays nice and bright. But yeah, it, this is a machine, sir. Get the get a fucking right, or get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, it's like the the first thing you learn as apprentice is like if you call it a gun, you can't tattoo. Yeah, so like you could you can like make fun of it, you know what I mean? Like you you can call it like a tat gun or you fucking scab blaster and shit like that. But but if you were to like not purposefully or if you were to you know um, say that shit, meaning it, then yeah, you'd you'd get scolded by somebody. Somebody would tell you that you're. You're not a real tattooer, you're saying it wrong. Because it's not a, a gun, it doesn't shoot people. <laughs> what kind of gun you using? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're using, a, I use Bishop machines, I like them a lot, Bishop rotaries. Um, especially the lining machine, it's a five stroke and this thing smacks, this thing's just ridiculous. <laughs> So right now, kind of just slowly reinforcing these shadows and, and dark spots where the hand meets the face. It looks a little scary right now with that eye. <laughs> it was like mascara bleeding. She's crying. Yeah, she's had it up to here. <laughs> so I'm very carefully kind of uh, just laying in these lines very lightly just to kind of get the shape of the chin right now. Um, same thing with the cheek. I'm kind of just trying to get those little marks from the stencil in there. That way I've got kind of a more or less of a permanent stencil. And as we work up in here around the nose and into the eyes and things like that, uh, I just want to make sure that those pieces are going to stay nice and strong. You know, the bottom of the nose, the sides of the nose, the nostrils, around the bridge of the nose. Those focal points I want to make sure stay there as strong as possible. Eyebrows I find to be very tough. I, a lot of the time I feel like um, if I were to be forced to be a makeup artist, I would fail. Right away. That's my kryptonite right there. Eyebrows, mascara. So I want to make sure I do them justice because she's got some nice brows. 
for switching out machines to a uh, the Bishop shader. Give it a little bit softer of a hit to work on these cheeks since her, uh, her facial tones in this tattoo are very, very soft. So we want to make sure that we don't have too many exposed to needle marks. Very soft. Very soft. That's what my name was in high school, Barry Soft. Barry Soft? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, Barry Soft. So there was a lot of white going into these hands, so I had to keep that in mind as the, we were putting the shades in that I didn't want to go too far with the shades uh, to mix with the white later. So I'm keeping that in the back of my brain the entire time to not go too crazy with these shades here and kind of let a lot of the white do the work when we get there. Right now I'm just darkening in the shoulders to kind of give some more pop to the, the dress that she's wearing on her. I know that's going to be white, so we want to kind of shade the back a little bit. And then, since she's sitting behind Bam as well, I want to make sure that uh, you know, she's looked like she's tucked in there and Bam sitting on top. New fresh needle for a three. New fresh needle for a nine. For the whites. Always a fresh new needle for the whites. Ooh, sparkly eyes. So working with the whites, you want to be uh, as confident as possible. Um, there's not much room to play around with because they, it gets red fast and it's not as thin as the gray wash. Normally I'd put whites in like the reflective surfaces, things that are wet, um, things that are metal, things like that, jewelry, um, and eye reflections, things like that. Sometimes I'll play around and put it in the skin and things like that. It just really depends on the reference and um, what it looks like by the time all the black shades are in. But we're gonna start putting whites. We already put whites in the eyes here, put some whites in the mouth. Uh, we're going to bring some more down here on the bracelet so you can't f around and uh, waste any time because the white likes to dry it awful fast. I hope it hurts. Ah, it's tender. <laughs> Can I use my phone? Call your mom? <laughs> <laughs> It's on my speed dial. It's on my speed dial. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> Why are you on pony speed dial? First of all. Pony's being mean. Second of all, please make me some Chef Boyardee by the time I get home. Thank you. <laughs> so normally I probably wouldn't add this much white to skin, but uh, you know, Gwen loves those overexposed photos and, uh, and that's kind of what we're all familiar with. So with her, I feel like it's an exception to kind of just blast white a little bit everywhere kind of give that, uh, you know, 90s overexposed look. We got a bleeder. Those whites are a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna soak in some Bactine real quick. That's it, and, um, um, and then we'll see what it looks like after that redness goes away. Open your eyes real wide. A little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Photoshop my ass. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be a little weird at first. The skin wasn't taking the ink as well as I thought it was, and it was kind of uh, bleeding a little bit in excessive at first, more than it normally would. Uh, but I just kind of let it sit for five or ten minutes, and, uh, and it seemed to tone down, and, and the colors seemed to settle in pretty well. Uh, and another strange thing that was happening along the way is the stencil started to kind of just bleed just ever so slightly. I kind of turned the AC up a little bit to kind of help with that, but uh, it just seemed like that location of the body, the, the stencil didn't stay as crisp as it should have, so there was kind of some, not like any worry at the beginning, but I was just very curious to how it was going to turn out. But uh, yeah, I think we did a good job. You did excellent. <laughs> <laughs> if I felt bad at all for him, I probably wouldn't have put that much white in. But I had no feelings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
how they feel, man. Feels good. Yeah, I like it. Looks good. It's a good one. Yeah, that's like the perfect spot for it too. That looks good. Thanks again for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll see y'all in the future. $30,000. $30,000. Write you a check. <laughs> <laughs> Write you a check. <laughs>